Well, thank you, Cheryl. Appreciate that. And uh, I can tell you our campaign is going to get bigger and better, folks. So stay tuned to the Carrot Miners team and watch what we do here. So, Cheryl, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Let's move right along. I know Bill's going to be uh, doing a little interview here with V. Uh, v, thank you so much for joining our call tonight. Uh, v is called the Gorilla Economist, uh, folks. Uh, this guy's got a very interesting background. Uh, he's one of the most revered and sought-after economists out there with over – uh, uh, nearly 2 million listeners and ten, tens of thousands of followers, folks, listen to what this guy is talking about regarding the economy. Uh, v was telling me this afternoon that he works real close with the Jim Rickards Group and uh, some of their top associates. He's very well uh, familiar with Doug Casey, certainly Ron Paul and uh, Porter Stansbury and Alan Greenspan and the stuff he's been saying about owning gold. And uh, uh, V uh, came to this company, folks, and I'm going to have him say hi and just talk a little bit more about his background here. But V came to us by somebody in Carrot Bars. Listen to me carefully, folks. This is really, really important. Somebody that didn't know him. His name is Jeff. Jeff F. is in Foxtrot. And Jeff kept dripping on V. I never heard from him before, and here's here's a guy that, you know, has this huge radio show, the biggest in the world, and he dripped and dripped and dripped and finally got V's attention. Uh, if you'll learn anything from hearing this story tonight, folks, is don't ever, ever give up on people. If you really care about them, if you love them, you want to get in front of them, and you think that they can, uh, they need to have carrot bars in their life, to share with other people, don't ever quit dripping. You know, I, I know Dave and Nadine, uh, certainly Bill, uh, Andy, a bunch of my friends I've known for years. Sometimes it takes three months, folks, to enroll someone. Don't stop dripping. You know, if they're unless they say, you know what, lose my number, don't call me back, but never stop dripping. That's how we're meeting V tonight. He's excited about this business, and I can tell you, He's got one of the most fascinating backgrounds. I want to just talk a little bit more about it. I know V's been one of the top trading, uh, with one of the top trading firms out there in investment banks. He's been uh, contributing uh, uh, privately in creating an investment policy for a number of these institutions as well. His track record is uncanny, well-documented. Appearances uh, with Steve Quayle and Doug Hagman. Most of you folks have heard of these folks. Um, v predicted the pinpoint with pinpoint accuracy the play-by-play Eurozone crisis, folks. He was the first to warn about Japan's disastrous economic policies and how it would uh, be a domino uh, with the gravity of that around the world. Uh, V's been ahead of this stuff because he's really into what's happening in the economy with our dollar right now. The stuff you're reading about every day, folks, that's why he's in Carrot Bar. So, V, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know there's a lot of choices for you. Uh, as, as much stuff as you look at in uh, business opportunities, but can you share with folks what was your initial attraction to Carrot Bars? Why are you here? Pat, thank you for the introduction. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say hello to all of you that are listening in. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to, to speak to all of you and to help add to the tools in your repertoire and make you aware of things that are going on globally and why this business is something that is so important and, and, and why it's so critical. The reason why that I got involved in Carrot Bars, and, and I, I need you folks to listen very carefully to this, I had a guy who would constantly email me, found me, hunt, hunted me down, found me on Skype, added me <laughs> to uh, send out a request, and I said to myself, oh, heck, you know, fine, whatnot. The guy was persistent, okay? And because of his persistence, and I'm a busy – I am a very busy individual. i got 400 things going on on a daily, weekly basis. So this guy was persistent enough in order for me to stop what I was doing for that day and take a look at what this guy is talking about. At first, I looked at it, and I said, okay, this sounds like some sort of cheesy MLM. Uh, I'm not interested. But then I started looking at what it's all about, and it blew my mind away. And I said to myself, okay – I said, Jeff, I'm in. What do I got to do to sign up? That was it. I did my due diligence on the company. I looked into Harold. I mean, I made a few phone calls. I, I have some contacts in some very high places that I could do some serious inquiry into things, so to speak. And all I got back was positive results. And I said to myself, okay, I need to be a part of this. What attracted me to Carrot Bars is this, folks. I worked with... Uh, you know, I have my background in commodity trading, worked in banking, and my thing is I've worked with firms where we do large custodial accounts for institutional investors, 
and the like. And what that simply means is this. I would handle – somebody comes calls, gives me a call, hey, V, you know what? I want to get $5, 10 20 $30 million in gold. I need to offshore my wealth. What, you know, what do I do? So I would work with companies that would literally take millions of dollars of, of, of institutional investors' gold or credit you – know, some major heavy hitters, and we would go ahead and we'd vault it okay, in what's called a good delivery system. And it would be vaulted offshore out of, uh, out of the grimy hands of the U.S. government. And that's, that's very important right there. And, um, the, you know, vaulting it offshore, and then that vaulting company would keep the gold, and gold is a store of wealth, okay? There's, the, you know, a lot of people get currency and money mixed up. Currency is that worthless paper trash you have in your wallet that you're using to, for exchange of goods and services currently right now. That's currency. It's legal tender, meaning it's somebody else's debt obligation. Money has always been gold and silver. And when you get to the upper echelon of the game, you get to the upper levels of the game. Nobody's trading paper. It is a hard asset game. That's what it's all about. It is gold. It is silver. It is rare earths and strategic metals. It is land. It is hard, tangible assets. The elites do not play in paper. They let the paper, they let the masses play in the paper. Okay? So this custodial gold thing. Okay? So we'd, we'd have these, these, uh, these accounts set up offshore. Outside of any sort of a, uh, any sort of governmental confiscation or things of that sort, it's outside of the banking system, which is important, which means it's removed from any sort of third-party counter risk. Meaning, if you're buying your gold from a bank, quote unquote, that sells you the gold, if that bank goes bust, then your gold goes bust. Okay, you're not going to get it no more. You have to deal with somebody who has a close relationship with a re- with a refiner, and we dealt in something called the good delivery system or the good delivery network, and this is very important. A good delivery system is basically a relationship between a broker, vaulting companies, bullion banks, and 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 refiners. Okay, so the 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 broker would go to the refiner and get the gold, pure gold, cutting out the middleman, uh, LBMA certified, serial number, the whole nine yards. Let me know if some of the, some of this stuff sounds familiar, right? Okay, then he would vault it. And, and when, whenever he needs delivery of it, they can either deliver it or provide him cash. So in other words, he sets up his own little banking aspect, his own little offshore um, <clears throat> entity, so to speak. Okay. So when I saw carrot bars, and when I looked at it, and I said to myself, my God, they're doing the same thing. But they're doing it on a level where you don't need to be a multi-multi-millionaire in order to get involved. They are putting the most precious, tangible asset that you and I could own into the hands of every single able-bodied person. That is what blew me away. They have a relationship with an LBMA certified refiner. You're getting a serial, you're getting a, a, a gram of gold that has a serial number on it. You have vaulting capabilities. Carrot bars are vaulted for you. They could liquidate it for you. They could. Deliver it, ship it directly to your front door, and it's outside of the banking system, meaning it's outside of any sort of third-party counter risk. So when I looked at that from my big world that I'm dealing with, with all these major players, and I saw a company taking the lead in bringing something that was once relegated to somebody with, with a very high net worth and bringing it to a level where the average person could afford it. I was blown away, and I said to myself, this is something I need to be involved in, because the way the world is going, if you are standing there holding paper, and I don't care what it is, I don't care if it's a stock, I don't care if it's a bond, I don't care if it's a mutual fund, I don't care if it's an annuity, I don't care what it is, it is all denominated in the most toxic asset in the world, which is fast becoming the United States dollar. And that, Pat, is the reason why I got involved. Wow. Well, that's about the most amazing answer. I know that was ringing Sherline Gober's ears uh, for sure. It rang my ears and everybody on this line, V. That is absolutely amazing. And you answered my second question, why do you think uh, Carrot Bars is the answer? And you just gave it. So, you know, you have a lot in common, uh, V, with our good friend uh, and host, uh, Mr. Bill W. tonight. Uh, Bill owned his own brokerage firm for 22 years and worked with accredited investors all over the planet doing hedge funds and 
uh, gold and silver packages and every kind of commodity you can imagine. So I know Bill wanted to uh, communicate with you tonight and ask you a couple of questions as well. So, Bill, I've got a couple more at the end, but go ahead. Yeah, A.V., I appreciate that, uh, that little blast you just gave us. That was amazing, and uh, you answered the question so succinctly. I'm, I appreciate that. But I, I know you have your hand on the pulse of the economic climate, and you do produce a very successful radio broadcast show, and I hope that uh, myself and a lot of others will tune into that here in the future. But thinking about the you know, the current situation, the sudden surprising decline in oil prices, it's been good for global economic growth, good for us buying gas and diesel, but many forces are blowing the other way, and among them are the slowing growth in China, the recession in Russia, stagnation in Europe, and, you know, commodity producers. You mentioned commodities. I had my turn at that, too. But they're reeling from lower prices right now, all the side effects of the rising U.S. dollar, which is supposed to be weak against all other currencies. So those are in emerging, emerging markets. So what do you think that's going to do for the future of gold? I know you like gold, as do I, and some people do and some people don't, but where do you think that's going to leave the future for gold? Well, you got to look at a you got to look at it this way, okay? Um I have a lot of contacts within the BRICS organization. I have a lot of contacts in Russian finance. And it's amazing to me that I can get on the horn with with with, with a colleague of mine in Moscow with a colleague in Crimea, with a colleague in St. Petersburg, and talk to them and say, hey, what's going on over there? Their, an their, their answer is, what recession? <laughs> the question is, the, the, reality, the hard reality is, is, is this, folks. You are having the death of the king dollar. You're having the death of the petro dollar, okay? And um, the whole oil thing is, is, is something that I've written about months and months and months ago before it even happened. And it's something that, that, that's, a, that's part of a larger geopolitical play. But in terms of what's really happening with China, Russia, the BRICS nations, here's what's really going down. The best performing stock market of 2015 year to date is the Russian, is the Russian stock exchange. The best performing currency right now where the dollar has lost 30% of its value is the ruble. Okay. This is something that's not trumpeted in mainstream American press because they wanted to, you know, tow that tagline, oh, the sanctions are, are hurting the Russians, oh, my God, it's, you know, slow down in China, this, that, and the other. The, the reality is, the cold hard reality is, is that the Russians and the Chinese know that in order for them, it's kind of like paper, rock, scissors, the kids game. The U.S. is playing with a lot of paper. The Russians and the Chinese are paying, playing with rocks. They're playing with hard assets. And the way that you break this paper monopoly, the stranglehold that the West has gotten, that the insolvent West has gotten on much of the, of, of the world economically, is to beat it with hard assets. So while all these sanctions, which have backfired and hurt the U.S. economy more than anything else, has been happening, the Russians and the Chinese have been buying vast amounts of gold. Okay. Now, the low oil prices, it's, it's something that I've warned about, and this is how it ties in. Oil, folks, is a financialized instrument. It is probably one of the most financialized instruments out there. And what I mean by financialized is this. We all remember back in 2008 when the mortgage crisis started. Okay? What, well, what happened before that? Well, you know, before the, you know, 2000 when, you know, when, Greenspan come out and said, you know, everybody should say everybody's right to own a home, and he loosened, all right, uh, uh, the you know uh, uh, lending practices, which I, I like to call he he made it he, uh, basically if you can walk into a bank and fog a mirror, they gave you a loan. Okay, we had we had the liar loans, we had these subprime mortgages. What happened was mortgages, which were at one time an asset, okay, became financialized where all of a sudden now it's being used as collateral and is leveraged 10, 20, 30, 40 times. That's why today you have people whose homes are getting foreclosed on, yet they're current on their mortgage payment. They're like wondering, what, what, wait a minute, what the heck's happening? Right? Well, it was because you know, their mortgages got sold off 10, 20, 30 times down the road. Some bank somewhere defaulted, and now somebody's coming to collect on the, on, on the collateral. It's the same thing with oil. Oil, vast amounts of financial industry has been built around $80 to $100 oil. 
they weren't ready to, for it to go to the you know the fifty forty, soon to be in the thirty dollar range. They're they're not ready for that. So what's been happening, and and was what one thing I predicted, is that during the winter time, and we had a cold winter this year, it kept the demand for natural gas going and the demand for home heating oil going. But now coming to the spring, as things are warming up, what are what what is the thing that we're hearing? We're hearing massive amounts of layoffs that are occurring within the petro, the, the, the oil industry, the natural oil and natural gas industry. One by one, all over the Bakken Valley in North Dakota, in the Marsala Shale in Pennsylvania, in the, in the Texas Gulf states, in, the, in the North Texas and the Louisiana, you're having these layoffs coming to be. And what people don't realize, these oil companies are dependent upon getting these these, 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 these lines of credit in order to operate. And now they're going bust with the price of oil being so low. It is affecting everything. And folks, why is this critical? 27 states are affected by the petrol oil industry. So this is another thing that's going to be, begin to have massive pressure on the U.S. economy, number one. Number two, let's go back to the China-Russia thing. What they've been doing, see, the Chinese knew in order for them to beat the U.S. at their own game, they're going to have to blow some bubbles. And they did. They, they created some bubbles, $20 trillion bubble here, $10 trillion bubble there. But when you look at the unofficial uh, gold count, and from what I'm hearing, it's, it's around twenty to 25,000 metric tons of gold China currently holds. The Russians are anywhere up to close to 30,000 metric tons. Okay, they know in order for them to withstand the the impact from a dollar default, from a dollar going down in flames, is to be in hard assets. Number one, and number two, they need to de-dollarize and create their own financial system. Well, what have they been doing? Three weeks ago, we got word China launched what's called the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. It is their counter to the IMF, okay? The AIIB was launched. And then as soon as it was launched, within a matter of days, the Brits, our quote-unquote allies, said, hey, we want in. And as soon as the Brits said, hey, we want in, guess what? You had Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Australia, New Zealand, all rushing towards the exit doors. As I'm speaking to you and as you hear my voice, 25 of the largest economies in the world have already set up currency swaps to trade amongst themselves, bypassing the dollar. In other words, king dollars are being kicked to the curb. Russia and China launched, with the help of Turkey, what's called the Iran-Indian-Turkey workaround, so to speak, where the Turks and the Indians bought Iranian oil, paid for it in gold. The Chinese, the Russians, the BRICS nations, AIB, Okay, uh, SCO, Shanghai Cooperative, uh, Global South, all these trade zones that are emerging globally, VCEP, RCEP, all these massive trade zones where 70 to 80 percent of global GDP is, is nestled in, where 70 percent of global manufacturing is rested in, where over 60 percent of global trade goes through. These trade zones have come together and said, guess what? We're going to trade. And one of the big things that are being presented here is a gold-backed trade settlement note, number one. And the second biggest thing is we don't want the dollar. In other words, the, the dollar and the U.S. is not invited to this party. So what is this going to do to somebody who holds a hard asset like the dollar? I mean, I'm sorry, like, like, like gold. What is it going to do to gold prices? We all know about the manipulation. It is criminal. One of my colleagues who is connected to Baffin, which is a regulatory agency in Germany, okay, a real regulatory agency. Baffin has come forward in investigating the gold fraud that's been happening within the global markets. And they said that the fraud that is occurring in the gold market is greater than the fraud that's occurring in the LIBOR scandal. Okay, So you're talking about massive criminal fraud. The world is starting to wake up that – to the fact that the only thing that we in the West are doing is pushing paper, manipulating the numbers, and, fraud, and, 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 and being involved in massive fraud. That's it. 
So what they're doing is they're realigning themselves into various trade zones, various um, groups that are outside of the dollar, outside of U.S. influence, and they will trade amongst themselves, isolating the U.S. And this is why it's so important that you cannot be in paper. You have to be in a hard asset like gold. And that's why the carrot bars are so critical. You know, Pat asked me a question early on. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate carrot bars? And I said uh, some, some, some crazy number like 1,000. And what I meant by 1,000 is this. This product, and I'm telling you this from somebody from, from my position, from my experience of working on it on a very large level. This product, this business, is as vital as air, it's as vital as food, it's as vital as water to you and your family. This is what's going to determine if you stay viable on the other side of this thing. What do I mean by the other side of this thing? I'm talking about a coming economic collapse within the United States, and you cannot be in the dollar. You cannot be in paper. Wow. That well, was what I'm I say you. as well. Hey, um, that's quite a statement. I appreciate that. But, you know, V, people like yourself, Rickers, Maloney, Schiff, Turk, there's so many economic pundits out there, and they're all warning of the same impending financial crash you just so eloquently described. But on the other hand, we've got many critics that are crying wolf. They're saying it's been going to happen. It never happened. It, uh, in fact, the current administration is saying we're in a full swing recovery. They're saying it's all bunk. It's not going to happen. So I believe like you do, but I would just be interested to know, what's your take on timing? Perfect. You know, we all want to be prepared, but what is what, what do you think the timing is on this that's coming down the pike? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. You know, oftentimes a lot of people say the same thing. Well, when's it going to happen? There's, you know, so-and-so, he said this, it was going to happen 10 years ago, and it didn't happen, and somebody said it was going to happen five years ago, it didn't happen. Well, folks, let me tell you this. Here's the timetable, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to connect it with something else, so please – Please pay very careful attention. Ten years ago, okay, when the dot com bubble, we had a little, you know, economic. Re- I'm sorry, that's like 15 years ago. Excuse me. Um, you know, we went through economic recessions. The, so, in other words, when we're in a fiat system, and I'm sure that the listeners know what a fiat system is, is basically currency printed out of nothing, backed by nothing, uh, you know, uh, being pushed out there. That's what a fiat currency is by edict. Okay, fiat currencies last about 40, maybe 50 years or so, then they go bust. Because in order to sustain a fiat system, you got to constantly blow bubbles. Well, we blew the dot-com bubble. Then we blew the housing bubble and a whole litany of other bubbles before that. We are currently out of bubbles to blow. So now we're into straight-up number manipulation, okay? And this worked. Okay, so, in other, in, in, so if I were to give everybody a succinct definition on the U.S. economic system, it's this. It is a giant Ponzi scheme. And one of the things I always said to people is a Ponzi scheme, always, it only works just so long as you have a willing sucker to buy into the scheme. As soon as you run out of suckers to sell your Ponzi scheme to, the Ponzi scheme falls apart. And the, wor- and the people realize, hey, the emperor has no clothes. It's the same situation in the global scale, okay? A couple of years ago, we didn't have the rush. We didn't have the BRICS, okay? You go back 15 years, there there, there was no BRICS. There was no talk about a BRICS bank. There was no talk about uh, uh, between the Russians and the Chinese setting up these these energy deals, $400 billion energy deals, okay? There was no new Silk Road, okay? There was no Eurasian trade zone, which compasses – 17 time zones uh, with massive amounts of, of, of global GDP and wealth concentrated there. There isn't any of that. But these things happened. Okay, people are like, well, why is Russia and China trying to destroy the dollar? Well, they're not really destroying the dollar. They're reacting to something that we are doing. The blame for destroying the dollar is ourselves. Okay? So years ago, we didn't have all these things. Now, we have the AIIB, we have all these trade zones, we have all the infrastructure set up, we have the alternative, the SWIFT for international banking. All these systems and subsystems are already set. It's already built. The infrastructure is there. They're just waiting for somebody to like to turn on the switch. That's it. Everything is there. And what is that switch going to do? Everybody's in place, 
they're just waiting for the dollar to get done away with. Okay? And as I'm talking to you guys, okay, my latest report states that foreign nations, especially in the developing emerging markets, have increased their foreign reserves by 400%. And that does not include the dollar. They're de dollarizing. Russia has dumped 50% of its dollar holdings. The Chinese are dumping the dollar holdings. These things never happen. You go to a bond auction today in the United States, the number one buyer of U.S. bonds is the Federal Reserve. I mean, that's insane. The number one buyer of U.S. debt is the, is the American Central Bank. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Okay? So this game can't continue, number one. Number two, the infrastructure is in place. Everything is ready globally for this thing to blow and for the world to move on without the dollar. It's already in place. What you're seeing globally with all this terrorist nonsense, um, all this the, the, this propaganda about, about Russia invading Ukraine and all that other nonsense, which is not the case, folks. This is all propaganda because the dollar is dying. Okay? Now, that being said, uh, one of the things that I've gotten from my sources and from the data that I'm looking at, I put out a report stating, and various reports, back in 2013, 2014, that by the end of 2015 – we're going to see the undermining of the United States dollar as the world reserve currency. What does that simply mean? I didn't say dollar death. I didn't say dollar destruction. I said undermined as world reserve currency. Okay? We enjoy the lifestyle we lead because of the simple fact that our currency is used as the de facto currency in world trade and as the de facto currency used for trading in oil, okay? for pricing oil. That's starting to change. The world does not need a petrodollar anymore. That's going away. The world reserve currency status is going away as well. Countries have woken up to the fact that they don't need that. They don't need to pay the middleman. So the very thing that financed our lifestyle, the dollar, is being ditched. Nobody wants it. They're throwing it out. Okay? Uh, all these systems that, that I talked about earlier, these infrastructural systems that are set in place okay, for a, for a post-dollar world. That's in place, and all these things are undermining the, uh, the dollar as the world reserve currency. So we're on that schedule, but by the end of 2015, the dollar will not be the king dollar anymore. And what I mean by that is this. We entered 2012, okay? We entered 2012 as the, as, as the dollar was used by around 72%. I'm sorry, 2008. In 2008, the dollar was used 70, 72% of all global trade, Okay? was done in the dollar. Today, top firms are reporting it's anywhere between 45 to 47 percent. In other words, we've dropped over 30 some odd percent in global trade. They're de-dollarizing. And the Fed is buying it all up on the back end. Now, you add this whole thing going, you talk about the, the Ponzi schemes. We're looking at by the time of 2017, this thing is over. You cannot sustain it. We got away with it before. Because people were willing to buy our debt. Countries were willing to buy the U.S. dollar because at one point the dollar was as good as gold. Now the dollar is as good as toilet paper. Nobody wants it. So this game and this charade is going to go pop. And it's going to go pop soon. But the average American will not know this until the very rug is pulled from underneath him. Because you turn on TV. Oh, the stock market is at 18,000 points. And I guarantee you, folks, we're going to see a 20,000 possibly even a 30,000-point Dow before this whole thing blows because they want to keep the charade going. That's the timeline. you got about two, two and a half years at the most. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good answer, you know, and that leads me to my next question. You're in the know, as other pundits are, but most people that we talk to about carrot bars aren't. You know, in fact, they, uh, they got a six-pack and a pickup and a big screen TV, and they're happy as a cut pup. So they don't realize what's going on. So what would you, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the average normal person that we do deal with, in your opinion, how would you suggest that they switch some of their paper money into hard assets and do it on a common sense level so that they don't think you're crazy and they don't feel like we're uh, crying wolf or we're conspiracy theory, even though that may in fact be the truth? How would you recommend they move into hard assets? Well, I think uh, a lot of people... Uh, recognize inflation, even though their government lies to them and tells them inflation's at two percent. 
oftentimes I strike a conversation. Hey, I'm, I, I went to the grocery store today. Uh, a pound of ground beef is what four dollars? I mean, it's an, it's insane. And and people are starting to sense that the prices on things are starting to grow are, are starting to go up, and that has been always an effective way to help people understand. Another thing is this: every survey and poll that has been done, the number one concern for Americans right now is it's, it's not terrorism, it's not anything else, it's it's the economy. That is the number one thing. And then when you start telling people, hey, you know what, uh, uh, is there a way for you – if there's a way for you to diversify or, or to create an additional income stream for yourself, would you be interested? And most people are keen to it. And then you start telling them about, 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 about paper. Hey, you know, I like to use the Mickey Mantle uh, uh, example. And that's like, hey, if somebody made about you know, 10,000 Mickey Mantle – if they had one Mickey Mantle rookie card, but they printed you know, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 – uh, Mickey Mantle rookie cards. How much would those rookie cards be worth? The average, uh, you know, sports, sports watching, beer swilling American will be like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah that that the, the card won't be worth much. And that's when you tell them, hey, you know what, you know, what is a pack of, what is a dollar used to buy you back in the days? Well, a dollar used to, you know, buy you, you know, a couple of packs of gum. Now today, a dollar won't buy you a single pack of gum. And then you started, you know, telling them about gold, about the fact that here's the deal, you know. Uh, Dollar versus gold. The dollar has lost 98% of its value since 1913 versus gold. So that's when you start – and that's when you can start opening up people's eyes. Hey, you know, if there's a way for you to save money, save your wealth, you know, we're not asking you to invest here, invest there. We're asking you as a store of wealth, as, a, as an insurance policy for your family's financial well-being, and then that's when usually it k- kicks in. They're like, you're right, you know, finance, an insurance policy for my families and for myself's uh, financial well-being. And people tend to understand that. Uh, that's how I would pitch it, you know. And I, I mean, I can get real gritty. I mean, I, you know, but for the average person, you know, I would pitch it as that. It, it, it's, you, you look at inflation, you look at how to preserve your wealth, how to protect your wealth, and you look at the track record for gold. Which, folks, let me tell you something. You don't have to be ashamed of gold. Okay, because at the end of the day, here's the deal. We're telling people that they their dollar has lost 98% of its value versus gold. And we're just letting them know that, hey, guess what? That last remaining 2%, you might lose that as well. That's what it's all about. People tend to get that. That's amazing, man, when it all hinges on 2%. Wow, what a loss that'll be. Oh, well, man. anyway, I appreciate everything you've told us. You answered my next four questions, so I won't go there. You've done a great job. I want to appreciate you for that. Uh, but I do have uh, one other request. We've got people on the line tonight. Some people are, uh, you know, we're just born-again affiliates. We love Carrot Bars. We're doing very well. But we do have new affiliates that haven't really gotten started yet, and we might even have a few looky-loos on the call tonight that are just checking out Carrot Bars. They want to know what it's all about. And what advice would you have for someone like that that is either brand new, thinking about it, or is in it and has not engaged yet? Great question. I mean, for those people that are thinking about it, look, you know, 100 years ago, in order for you to find out information, you have to go to some massive institutional library somewhere and, and, and dig through books and read current events, try to figure out what's going on. But we have this wonderful, incredible thing called Google. And if you spend some time in research, okay, you begin to understand. And I'm not talking about, you know, it's funny, and I'm gonna, I just have to say this. In order for me to find out news, real news, about what's going on in the United States, I have to look at international news sources reporting on the U.S. That kind of gives you an idea of what the heck is really going on here. So I, I look at RT.com. I look at The Diplomat. I look at, I look at The Times of India. I look at all these sources. And what they are doing uh, in reporting the United States, and you'll see that there is a complete global realignment. So what we're talking about here tonight, folks, it's not a conspiracy theory. This is a fact. It's an unavoidable, inescapable fact. Okay? It's not, oh, the market might crash. The U.S. dollar might go away. No, 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 no. It will crash. It's not a matter of if. It's when, okay? So knowing that, okay, and I'm going to give you guys some hard numbers here, okay? 
you know, the, 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 the media outlets lie to you and tell you that unemployment rate's about 5.6%. Every firm on Wall Street that I know of that really tracks the real numbers pegs the unemployment rate at 346 What do I mean by that? Simple. You got 93.2 million people permanently out of the workforce, meaning they can't find a job, they gave up, they're done. 10.6 million are receiving unemployment benefits. That's over 100 million right there. You got another 101 million intermingled within that numbers that are receiving some sort of welfare. 52 million on food stamps. In other words, over 50% of the country is ineffective and non-productive and it's not working. How long? In other words, folks, all the numbers we had from the Great Depression, we've blown those numbers out of the water. We have superseded those numbers. So if you're looking into into this saying, oh, this is, sounds like a good idea. Let me take a look at it. This is this is reality. This is life. This is important. Okay. Fact after fact after fact after fact can be presented to you. The reality is you need to get out of paper. You need to have a financial insurance for you and for your family. And this company and this opportunity is the only thing in the world that allows you to play with the big boys, allows you to do the very same thing that those with very, very high net worth are able to do. And they're the ones who make it easy for you. Take advantage of this. This is not a, a conspiracy theory. This is an agenda. This is a reality. Seize it. Wow, I thank you for that. That was eloquent and amazingly clear. V, I want to thank you for coming on our show tonight, our little uh, show. It's our Tuesday evening show. We'll be happy to tune in to your show any and every time we can. But just thank you so much for sharing with all these people on this call tonight. Pat, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And once again, thanks a lot, V. We really did appreciate that. It's my pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Bill. Uh, v, thank you so much, man. I'll tell you, this was a fantastic call. Your uh, enthusiasm, your inspiration for Carrot Bars International uh, really came out tonight. It's genuine, and I congratulate you. I know you've got a lot of work to do uh, getting in front of people. We're here to help you do that. So thank you so much. Caroline Grover, thank you so much for being on tonight. And, again, thank all you folks as well. I want to say God bless every one of you on the call tonight, and God bless the United States of America. Good night, everybody. This calls a wrap.